Yeah. There was no doubt. It has never been in question. After all, the world is full of clever and motivated people who pursue what they reckon is their interest and they try for long enough, they put enough resources in and they will get where they want. We may not like this, but this is the nature of human relations. I should do a video about it. Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Today we are talking about Chinese engines. China is currently perceived to be a growing military power in many areas, including military aviation. However, Chinese aeronautics is still believed to be playing catch-up with Western and Russian designs. But the gap is constantly shrinking. In some areas, for example, for guided missiles is definitely narrow. But it still exists in one of the most critical areas of aircraft development, propulsion. Or at least this was the case till recently. There's nothing mysterious about the thermodynamics of a modern turbofan. You can learn how it works by reading a good book. You can also buy one for personal use. On the contrary, building a modern, low-bypass military turbofan is probably one of the achievements to attain for a country and its military industrial base. Even more than building a rocket and orbiting a satellite. Even more than building nuclear weapons or nuclear reactors. Even established engine producers may take a decade or two when they develop a new generation engine. It is a program with the same level of complexity as the aircraft itself. There are several reasons for this. Well, the main reason is that the application is really challenging for the materials and the construction. The rotation speed imparts heavy stresses on all parts either mobile or fixed. The compressors, the spools, the turbine, they all need the precision mechanic of a Swiss watch while bearing the loads of a bulldozer. And you can't simply make the parts bigger because like in every aeronautic construction, weight is a big factor. Moreover, if something goes wrong during development, the rotating parts and the high temperatures make really difficult understanding what is going wrong. It is difficult to take measurements inside a jet engine because the velocity fields are so complicated that are not easily visualized with the traditional techniques and the temperatures are a challenge for the sensors. And in fact, a good part of the know-how of an engine manufacturer revolves around these techniques to debug an engine. And the debugging is often something that you can't fix with a computer. For example, an unstable plane can be fixed and made stable by computer, and also the fix could be useful for other stuff. Engine problems require real engineering solutions. You need to fix the problem for real. In this case, you can't just offload the problem to a computer. And all of this is also true for the hot part of the engine. 
The engine turbine of a modern military turbofan is working at temperature well in excess of 1000 Celsius. At those temperatures, the mechanical properties of the materials change not for the best. In general, the performance of an engine improves with the increase of the turbine entry temperature. So the key technology for engine development is the ability to produce turbine blades capable of withstanding this harsh environment. This is probably the most important single technology to improve the performance of an engine. So the production of turbine blades was the part of the technology stack where the Chinese are believed to be lagging behind, at least until now. There are two typical failure modes for turbine blades. The first one is caused by the fact that the temperature reduces the tensile strength of the metal. If there is any microscopic defect in the metal, this may cause local stress concentration and the stresses may be locally high enough to grow, create cracks and bring to a general structural failure where structural failure means that the blade will be shot at high speed against the wall of the engine. The wall is light, it will be pierced and everything in the blade's way will be damaged. The turbine and the spool where the blade was attached will become unbalanced, they will start to vibrate and potentially self-destruct. In the worst case, a failed blade may end in a fireball. The other failure mode is creep, that is the tendency of the metal to be permanently deformed even if the stress is not high enough to cause macroscopic permanent deformation. Creep happens at micro level inside the material. Yes, because the grain inside the metal may move relatively to each other and remain locked in a different position so deforming the blade, even if at macro level, the stress was not enough to induce a permanent deformation. If the creep grows too much, the turbine and the spool may become unbalanced or the blade may start interfering with something else. And all of this may lead to a structural failure and you know the potential final consequence, another fireball. In 70 years, a lot of progress have been made going from the wrought iron in the first uh, turbojets to the modern high technology blades. A modern blade is a single metal crystal with internal cavities to circulate a cooling flow. The material will be a superalloy made of iron, obviously, but also nickel, titanium, with a surface thermal coating based on refractory metals uh, exotic metals like rhenium, for example. The process to build these blades is very complex, very expensive and requires the sort of know-how that is very difficult to acquire. There is no book that explains this know-how well enough to replicate it. These processes are among the best kept secrets of the aerospace industry. And when it comes to industrial secrets, well, the Chinese are at home. The Chinese have always been aware of the difficulties of designing and building modern jet engines. In the 90s, they tried to reverse engineer Russian engines of the time, but they have never been really successful. The Chinese copies has always been uh, not particularly reliable and they were lacking trust. However, for the next generation of fighter, the J-11, but principally the J-20 and the J-31, uh, definitely something better was required. And this was a problem because the WS-10, a copy of the Russian AL-31, was, well, dramatically inferior in terms of performances. Obviously, during the years, the WS-10 has slowly improved and today it is equipping the J-20. 
but the J20 is actually considered underpowered with these engines. And no use to say the Russians were not happy that someone actually copied their engines, but considering that China was one of their major customers, well, at, in the end, they looked the other way. Then, at some point, the Chinese seem to have turned a corner. On Christmas Day of 2016, the first four Sukhoi 35 had been delivered from Russia to China. With the planes came the Saturn AL-41F. The AL-41 is one of the most sophisticated engines in the world. It has a variable bypass ratio and a circular thrust vectoring. In fact, the Chinese tried to acquire it separately, but the Russian did not sell it. They were concerned that the Chinese wanted just to reverse engineer it. They only agreed to sell the engine well, together with the planes. The Russians were sure that the engine could not be copied because they built it in a way that disassembling it would have dam damaged it permanently, uh, making the copy impossible. Moreover, it would not really make sense to destroy a plane just to access the engine and dismantle it. The Russian could spot the operation quite easily with their support personnel in China. They believed that this was a risk that Chinese were not ready to run. We don't know if the Chinese managed to reverse engineer the AL-41, at least partially. What we know that apparently the WS-10 is actually developing very fast now. J-20's current engines are all being replaced as we speak. Anyway, something must have happened. Because, surprise, Chinese turbine blades are now available on the civilian market. And some European firms are also trying to acquire them. And if they do, we can be sure that they test them and they made sure that those turbine blades are of good quality. Some sources attribute this technology breakthrough to the acquisition, to the Chinese acquisition of two German firms specialized in aeronautic propulsion, but we don't really know for sure. Anyhow, it seems that the single technology that was holding by the Chinese is now available to them. And yes, I suppose it had to happen at some point. Well done, sir. Oh, thanks, but this was a, this was a simple one. Next week is going to be much more complicated. This script was 1,271 words. The next script is 2,197 words. The next script is 72.8% longer than this script, sir. Ah, uh, yes, it is. Uh, it is a small monster. Okay. Anyway, Otis. Please shut everything down.